Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, something good's going to happen today. Yes, amen. I just feel it. Every need in this place is going to be ministered Hallelujah. to. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a big God. Yes, amen. And if you think God doesn't know your need, he knows the very thoughts. Yes. And he's already prepared. To, I, I feel it. The answer's already on yes, the way. Yes. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Yes, we, had a, we had a wonderful time at the the convention, the awesome move of God, I tell you. Uh, probably one of the top five services I was ever in was one of them. And, and I've been in some powerful service. I've actually been in service with a pair of God shut buildings. And that's how powerful uh, one of the services was. And heard some great word. Yeah, I'm just, I got, so I'm on information overload right now. <laughs> so you better watch out. If I get turned loose, you might be here to supper time. That's all right. <laughs> but, so I, I'm trying to file all that stuff, but it's, I'm excited about what God's doing, yes, Lord. what he's going to do this yes, morning. Lord. Just, I, yes. I can feel the presence of the yes, Lord going Jesus. in to touch this morning. Yes, can we Lord. stand and just ask the Lord to have his way in our service this morning? Gracious Heavenly Father, we do worship you today. We ask, Lord, that you'll receive our worship, God, that you'll be pleased with us today, God. Lord, let us say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. And Father, I pray, God, for every need that's in this place right now. Lord, every need, every heart be mended, every heart be touched, God. Lord, I pray right now. And Lord, when we leave this day, this service this morning, let us say it was great to be in the house of the Lord. And Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord this morning. Join in with us and obey what this is. Obey the Lord. your love. Hey. Oh, how glorious are you, Lord. It's your power. And it was your cross. Hey. your love. Oh, how glorious are you, Lord. It's your power. It's your power. And it was your cross. And it was your cross. Are you, Lord? It's your word. 
and it's your love. Yes. Oh, how glorious are you, Lord? It's your power. It's your and it's your cross. It was your cross. became a king forever and with a crown of thorns you became a king forever oh you saved me hey and you rescued me glory just one moment there he set me free i give you glory And you rescued me just one moment there. You set me free. No more chains. Thank you, Jesus. No more shackles. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I've been set free from shame, from guilt, from addiction. Oh, Thank you, 
Jesus. No more shackles. Thank you, Jesus. I've been set free. Yeah. I've been set free.
you just imagine as we say around here there's no judgment zone we don't care what yesterday held we don't care nothing the only thing I want you to think about is the creator of the universe loves you he loves you he cares about you Hallelujah. he cares about the very little things in your life everything and this is your day This is prophetic to somebody. This is your day. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time. Clap of worship. Thank Hallelujah. You. I tell you what. Oh, That's the worst praise I've ever heard thank in my life. Jesus. Give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's stand up and give him a real praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy, church. He's worthy of praise. 
give it all. Now you can be seated. Hallelujah. My God is worthy of it. Amen. What a God that we serve. Amen. Can we, we have, we have visitors here this morning. Can we give them a hand? Amen. Good to have uh, Sister Deb's family, Robert and Holly and their kids with us too this morning. Amen. Amen. Love seeing them with us. Amen. They're not visitors, they're just family. <laughs> God's good, isn't he? He's so good. Amen. Amen. Good to have you here this morning. Amen. Don't forget, let me get my announcements out of the way. It won't take me but a second here. Uh, don't forget our service this evening. Uh, don't know exactly, don't have no idea yet uh, what I'll be sp uh, speaking on, what our purpose prayer will be. I'm just waiting to hear from God. And uh, if he gives it to me before service is over, I'll tell you. If he doesn't, you just have to come and see. That's all okay. I can tell you <laughs> if you want to know. But we have had some powerful Sunday night services, and I thank God for them. Don't forget our Thursday night service. We have a, uh, a T-shirt here from the, it's the Freedom Rally from the Stand in the Gap people. They're going to have a rally on November the 2nd at the fairgrounds, and they have, they're trying to, get into our public schools and, and teach uh, about the hazards of drugs and that kind of stuff. And, and I think it's awesome. And uh, I think it's time that we, get, we have an awareness about the drug situation in our county. And uh, it has to be church something got to give. Now, I, as you know, and I feel this all over me. So I'm just, somebody say, just obey it. Obey the Lord. Uh, Brother Luke, stand up here and just show him his shirt while I'm talking. Uh, uh, oh, let me say, uh, Sister Leslie, are you the one that we're supposed to tell the sizes? All right. They're 10 bucks. For all sizes. For all sizes, 10 bucks. And uh, this goes to help them uh, into standing in the gap in their, their organization and goes for the, uh, the rally. It's going to be us on November the 2nd. So uh, uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, see Sister Leslie after church. Stand up where everybody can see you and know who you is. I think <laughs> they do. There she is. <laughs> All right. And, uh, but here's what I'm going to tell you, because I feel this, and I feel like God's fixing Obey to do something Lord. in this building this Obey morning. Obey the Lord. Now, I'm from the old school. Yeah, come on now. I'm old school. You say, Pastor, what's old school? I still serve a God that's that right. can deliver from that's drugs. Right. That's right. That's right. Instantly. Yeah, yeah. Instantly. I still serve a God that can get rid of, and I'm saying this because I feel this this morning. There's people that, that have been overcome with suicidal spirits and depression. No, I'm on. telling you, you can leave here this come morning, and they will not be no suicide spirit or no depression. My God will set you free. Hallelujah. People say, Pastor, have you seen it? I have seen it. Yeah, come on. Brother Carlos, I've been blessed. I've seen them delivered and set free by the thousands. It's just beginning. Yeah. And I'm telling you, something's going to happen this morning. There's, there's things that are in our life. If you will trust God, this will be your day of deliverance. You don't have to go through what you're going through. Say, Pastor, do you believe it? I not only believe it, I live it. Hey, come on now. Hey, come on. So here's what I'm telling you, church. We work together to see, but there's those this morning you can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Woo, tell you again. Obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. There's too much at stake to take come a chance to, yeah, to wait. On. Yeah, come on. Come on. There's too much at stake. Yeah. It's true. Go obey it. Yes. You say, Pastor, why can't why am I struggling? Why am I having all this trouble? I'm gonna be ministering just in a minute, I promise you. 
why, why is this going into my life? Why, why, can't I, why can't I make it? You will understand when you leave here this morning, and you're going to leave here a different person if you'll just let God have a hold of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Woo. I'll go this far. If you do what the Lord says this morning, and you come, and this ain't the best week of your life, you come back next Sunday and you say, Pastor, that was a disappointment. I'll t I promise you one thing. I'll never witness to you again because I'm going to tell you, my God will make a difference in your life immediately. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is, I, I said that because this is a good thing. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's awesome that we can come together. It's, it's, a, it's a, for all denominations, all people, one of the things that we have to do is get rid of religion. A lot of people are suffering today because you're so full of religion. You ain't, there's no room for God in your life. We're going to have to get rid of some religion. Yep, true. But truth. this is the coming together. They, I don't know. I, I've just been to one, or two, one of their meetings, and I haven't got to attend many. But they have some, they've got some good things going on. And uh, this is to support them. And if you're going to show up, show up wearing that shirt. Amen. I can be seated. So to see, uh, see Sister Leslie, that's uh, $10. That's not bad. God's good, isn't it? God's good. We're going to go ahead and lift our Sunday morning tithe and offering. And I want you to give as God speaks to your heart. I'm going to say this again. I thank God for or the convention we got to attend. It was awesome. I... I wish that next year we could just load up and just make arrangements and take the, yeah. take the whole church. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Uh, Perry Stone said this. He said this was the best convention he's ever had since 19, he started in 1987. It was the most powerful, and I believe that. It was awesome. And I've attended many of them. And uh, God's good. If you have your offering, have Brother James and Brother Luke, would you help them this morning? Lift their Sunday morning tithe and offering. Sister Becky, you get as a, when they get up here, hold your offering in your right hand. If you don't have an offering, just hold up your right hand. We want to pronounce a blessing on you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is my tithe, and it will do what God says it will do. The windows of heaven are open over me and my house, and such blessings have been released that I do not have adequate room to contain them all. I am the seed of Abraham, and yes. the oath God swore to him is my inheritance. Oh, Therefore, I release my tithes and my offering into the fertile soil of his presence. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank this you, is the Jesus. day the Lord has made. We will rejoice <laughs> and be glad in it. Amen. What a mighty God. We're going to go ahead and change the service this morning. Hallelujah. Give him a hand. God's good, isn't he? Amen. Amen. Give him just a moment. You can be turning in your Bible if you want to the book of John. Chapter number 7, or you can also read it off the screen here in just a second. John chapter 7, we're going to go down to verse number 37. This is familiar scripture. If you've been a Christian for over a year, you probably could quote these verses. But we want to take our text from here this morning. What a mighty God. I, I, I want you to just take one moment before we, before we pray. I want you to wait on the Lord because I, I feel this in my heart. There's, there's people that really need a touch of God that's in this house this morning. There's going to be those that's listening on our live stream and those that will listen throughout the day that need a touch. They don't need a goosebump. They don't need a feels good message. They don't need a pat on the back. Just all right. There's people that need a touch from God. I'm talking about a miracle touch. This is Miracle Day. Hallelujah. Would you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege, God, to be in your house. I thank you for my brothers and sisters, those that's here this morning, God. They're such a blessing. They're such mighty people, mighty worshipers. Thank you for them, God. Lord, I ask that you anoint me this morning. Anoint my mind, God, my tongue. God, let me just speak the things that you would have me to speak. Father, I ask, Lord. I ask that you open our hearts, God. Lord, that the seed of the word of God be sown in the good ground of heart, that it brings forth much fruit. A hundred, a thousand fold. In the name of Jesus, the devil will rebuke you. You do not steal, kill, or destroy this word. And the church says, Amen. I would like everybody that's able just to stand for the reading of the word of God, if you're able, in reference and in honor to God's holy word. Just going to read three verses. In verse number 37, it says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and he cried, saying, I want you to listen to this. This is Jesus, and he was not just whispering this. The Bible said he stood up. And he cried it out loud. In other words, he raised his voice to a high pitch. And he said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and what? Amen. Verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let's go to verse 39. Now, John the writer here, John, explains what the Lord just said. But, he, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. And the church says, Amen. Amen. So, you may be seated. John made that very plain. That believers have a spirit. Amen. Amen. Believers have a spirit. We have an, we have an advantage over the world. Amen. You say, Pastor, are we special? No, we're not special. Are we more righteous? No, we're not more righteous. Are we more holy? No. But you know what we are? We're children of the Most High God, and we're temples of the Lord. And so He dwells within us. So I want to just speak just a second. to Get your mind on this. My whole life, and I know, and it's been one of my messages, it's one of my premier messages, is I've preached on the, the move of God that's about to take place. It has begun to take place. 
If you've been around me long, you know probably every other message or most every message I will mention that because I truly believe this. That's been a part of my life. I believe the best is yet to come. I believe the best of your life is yet to come. Something's about to happen. And, but I believe that somewhere along the line, we as church people, we started looking for this move of God because it says the latter rain is greater than the former rain. And we're expecting a second Pentecost. And so sometimes our our expectations get wrong. And so we're waiting for a rushing mighty wind to come out of heaven and cloven tongues of fire to come and to set upon us. I'm going to tell you something. That is not going to happen. Pentecost has already happened. It will not happen again. Amen? Amen? The Holy Spirit is already here. Don't have to be sent here. And I heard, brother, and I, I hate to, I won't mention his name because sometimes if I don't quote it word for word and it gets out there, it may, it, it may cause him harm, and I wouldn't do this. But I heard uh, a major preacher preach this, something like this, and he said, he said the church needs to stop waiting on that rushy mighty wind because if that's what they're waiting on it's never going to happen if there's an outpouring that's going to take place it has to come from within us because the spirit's in us and so I want to ask you this morning how many here need God to move in your life would you just be you know I'm not looking at hands but if just you have to be honest with yourself the only person that you in this world you better be honest with is yourself. You might fool the preacher, you might fool this and you might fool that, but you'll never fool yourself and you'll never fool God. Be honest with yourself. Tell, tell, say your weaknesses. A lot of people say, Pastor, I wouldn't say my weaknesses. I'm going to tell you I want my weaknesses out there. The only way God can deal with them, I put them out there. Amen. We need it. There's people here and listening to me this morning. They need deliverance. They need set free. They need a touch. Some need heal. Some need financial touches. Some need a move of God in their home. Some are holding on with thread and you don't even know what life means. You need a touch from God. Can I tell you this? You don't even know what love is to God come into your heart. I'll say this too. I, I, I'm just going to obey the Lord for a second. Is that all right? Still early, isn't it? Man, it ain't too early. But anyways, I heard back when I would be minister on the streets and stuff a lot, I heard people say, well, Pastor, I love the party. I'm going to tell you something. You don't know what a party is till you come to a Holy Ghost party. And I'm going to tell you something about a Holy Ghost party. It never ends. It goes home with you. He gets up with you. He's there all the time. And so we need this outpouring of God. So, Pastor, what's got to happen? I want you to go to verse number 37. Put it up there just one more time just for this. I want you to listen to the red letter part of this verse and it says if any man thirst if any man or this means a woman too any child adult anyone thirst if you would very quickly put up Matthew 5 and 6 blessed are they which do hunger and what for they shall what for they shall be filled. I'm going to ask you this morning, what kind of thirst do you have? Right. 
can I just say this and be, you won't get too mad at me? If you was truly thirsty, we'd still be worshiping. Don't come and tell me you're thirsty and 20 minutes of worship wears you out. You're just fooling yourself. You ain't fooling God. Don't tell me that you're thirsty and you say the music's too loud or that's the wrong song. You're off base. It doesn't matter if it's amazing grace or how great thou art or what the song is. When you're thirsty for the things of God, you want to praise the Lord. Can I preach a moment? When you get thirsty for the things of God, religion goes out the door. You no longer care what man's ideals are. You want what God's got. Do I have anybody that's thirsty this morning? Do I have anybody that's thirsty? Glory. Whew. Are we thirsty enough to seek God? Now listen to me. As far as I know everybody here is a Christian, but I don't, I'll never take that for granted. I was preaching one time, and I thought everybody was a Christian. I gave an order calling a person that had attended my church for 20 years. Got up and gave their heart to the Lord. I thought he sat under my anointed preaching for 20 years and never gave his heart to the Lord. I wasn't disappointed. I'm thinking, man, don't take something for granted. If you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. If you died right now, you don't know if you go to heaven. You need to know. So the first thing you have to do If you're thirsty, go back to John 7, 37. It says, if any man thirst, let him come unto me. Number one, I don't care what you're going through right now. While I'm speaking right here, I want you to say, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. Forgive me of all my sins. And come into my heart. If you'll say that, God, there's something happening. So I'm going to tell you something this morning. There's no magic to this. There's no mystery to it. You ask Jesus into your heart. And if you're thirsty, you want to come to the Lord. And I'm going to now, I want you to read the last word that says drink. You can, hear the, you can hear preaching all day. You can sit in church the rest of your life. You can be faithful. You can be a, a faithful servant of God, a tithe payer, whatever you want to be. But if you don't drink, you don't have. I said if you don't drink, you don't have. I'm going to preach. I'm going to get to my message, but I want you to understand this. You say, Pastor, how do you drink? You have to want it. You have to say, it has to be the most important thing in your life. I want Jesus. I want this righteousness. I want this, what God has for me. More than anything. I don't care what it costs me, Lord, here am I. Everybody says salvation is free. The blood was free. It will cost you your life. It will cost you. Because you cannot come in contact with Jesus Christ that he does not change your life. He turns your frowns upside down and makes them smile. Come on now. He takes them old, them depressing days and he turns them. You don't even want to be happy and you're going to be happy. That's God. That's the God I know. Turns them old Mondays in the payday Fridays. Come on now. <laughs> Nowadays, with all this direct deposit, Friday's not too important, is it? Back in my day, buddy, you worked two weeks, and when it come payday Friday, you was excited. They hand you that little envelope, that check in there. Man, for about five minutes before you realized how small it was, you thought you owned the world. <laughs> Nowadays, with this direct deposit, <laughs> you, 
<laughs> you don't even know it. You just go, it, it, it just takes something away. But I'm going to tell you something. When you get thirsty for the things of God, you start drinking. So here's what I want to show you. The next verse, 38. Is here's the outpouring church. Out of your bellies, she'll put up there in just a second. John 7 38, shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. See, we want it just to be the preacher, the deacons, the elders, the teachers. That's not Bible. Out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. About seven years ago, maybe eight years ago, I had this vision. And I shared some of it with the church. I don't know if I shared it all. But I usually write visions down. And I had a vision. I seen this beautiful mountain stream. Man, was it flowing. You know, you, you, know, ever, you ever go over to the Smokies and just listen to the water? Or go over to come and get and you just hear how beautiful and it sounds. And I seen this, and all of a sudden, I'm looking at this beautiful stream, and I come across a dam. And the water ceased. There was little trickles come out. And I looked real close at the dam. And as I looked at the rocks, I seen words on each rock. I seen the word fear, unbelief. I seen the words, the cures of this life. I seen all these words. And I heard the Spirit speak to me and says, there's so much holding up the river that it can't get through. Now, I shared some of that with you. There's a trickle. We've got a little bit of God that flows through. We see a, a, we see a move of God here and there. We're blessed at this church. We have a river. But I'm talking about in general that you, you, you see all this, and all you see is the bad things in life. You see how drugs is taken over, depression, suicides. You see all this terrible stuff. And you're thinking, what's it going wrong? So I'm going to speak to us just a second. If you want this outpouring of God, the thing that has damned up the spirit in you, God told me to release it. Now, before I go on this message, I want you to understand this. Stand here with me just a second. There's nothing special about my hand. There's human. You can see I lost a finger. My hand ain't even perfect. They're healed by arthritis. There's nothing special. Feel them. They feel normal? I hope. <laughs> you feel life in there, man? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord, I'm alive. <laughs> I was going to have to check my toes if I had a toe tag. <laughs> but you can sit down. I, I want to show you, there's nothing here. No power. Sister Becky and I, perfect. This is dangerous. <laughs> All right, so I'm not perfect. Boy, that was scary. <laughs> my hands are normal. And if you're around me too much, you'll find out there's a whole lot of imperfection in me. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. In my prayer time, the Lord told me, you can believe it or not, I don't care. Some of you will. That God gave me the authority, Brother Tony, this morning, to break some dams. Brother Tommy, that day that you touched me and God 
tuck that pain on my back. He gave you the authority to touch me. And actually, you had the authority before he gave it to you. But you knew. Brother Tony, when you pray for somebody, you have the authority to do that. God told me this morning that it's time to release the rivers out of our bellies and let's tear down some dams. You may sit there and say, Pastor, I don't have none. I want to talk to you because you've got to be special. <laughs> anybody ever met anybody that didn't have some kind of hindrance? I just sat under some of the greatest preachers in my life, and I heard every one of them talk about their imperfections and their drawbacks. And so the Lord said, we have to pull these dams down. And he says, you know how I'll do it today? He said, when you lay hands on them, those that are thirsty, the dams will come down and their lives will be changed. Fear is going to be gone. Doubt's going to be gone. Things that have hindered you is about to break loose. If we're going to have this latter day outpouring, it has to come from within us. It's time that we let the pouring take place. This world needs it. We need it. Amen. God's good, isn't he? You say, Pastor, I'm not, I'm not worthy. I, I, I heard John Kirkpatrick say this, and I said I wasn't going to say some names, but I done said it. And so, but if I, I'm repeating what I heard, so if I don't say it word for word, don't you hold it against me. But I'm going to tell you, he was talking in his message, preached a wonderful message. He hadn't preached, I believe, in 10 weeks. He had double knee surgery, and he was very weak in body, but he wasn't about to miss this opportunity. And he began to talk about the Brownsville Revival. And he said, in the Brownsville Revival, people got thirsty. A lot of Christians. He said, so people would get in line to go into his services 24 hours before the door opened. Could you imagine going to church at 12 o'clock at night or 1 o'clock in the morning to be there for 7 o'clock that next evening? They built little boxes and sleeping bags and all. He said, he said and, and he even added this, he said, you talk about, he said, I almost got impeached. He said, could you imagine all the religious people in my church? And he said, I was one of them. He said, I hadn't changed. He said, I was stuck. He said, all of a sudden, everybody in their church had to sit in different pews. He said, I had people with that church 25 years had changed their parking place. <laughs> he said, I never seen so much hate. He said, I seen billionaires sitting on a seat and the poorest person in the United States sitting next to them. He said, you'd walk in my doors, I'd walk in my doors to, to preach or to have start service at him. He said, the smell of marijuana would almost make me high. He said, if it wasn't the smell of marijuana, it smelled of alcohol. He said they were either alcoholics or they were smoking dope, had all on their clothes. He said, and here's what he said, he said, and I loved it. <laughs> but he said the Boston, not the Boston, the Dallas newspaper sent a reporter over to do a story. And he said him and Steve Hill was back in their prayer room, and somebody knocked on the door and said, there's a reporter here who'd like to interview you. And he said, send her on in. And said, see, come in and said, Pastor, I can't believe that you call this a church. And he said, honey, what are you talking about? He said, I walked through that line of people out there. And she said they were drunk. He said some of them were smoking dope, popping pills in line. It wasn't saved yet. And you call this a church? He said, that's the very people I want in this church. 
You see, when you get religion out of the way, you get God down. After he explained to her what God could do to these people, she had a little bit of change of heart. And she said, well, this is my buddy over here that runs a tattoo parlor like this one. Said, uh, there's one guy out there in that line who's dressed in nothing but his skimpies. He said, I didn't even know what skimpies were. He said, boy, I found out. <laughs> and said he had tattoos on every visible part of his body. And he said, I believe he had tattoos under his skippies. <laughs> and said, even when he had them on his eyelid, when he closed his eyes, it said, okay. <laughs> you say, Pastor, God can't do nothing to that person. I want you to listen. So this news reporter said, what are you doing in this line? He said, I'm from, I believe it was Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And he said, I was riding my Harley last Saturday, and a boy spoke to me and said, I'll meet you in Brownsville. So this news reporter said, well, what church you belong to? He said, I've never been in a church in my life. I don't even know what a church is. She said, well, you're in line at church. He said, I don't know that. He said, well, what are you doing here if you don't know what a church is? He said, didn't you hear me? There was a voice told me they'd meet me in Brownsville. He said, I'm going in there to find out who that voice is. When the dam comes down to her, it reaches everybody. It reaches down to everyone. Man went in that building. Can you imagine him trying to get in most churches in Claiborne County in his skippies? Every one of us run home and give him a pair of pants. I'm going to tell you something. You just walked in the church that we went through this. <laughs> Pearl Bailey and the others used to pull up out here on Sunday morning right before worship service about 11 o'clock. And we sent three vans to Knoxville. And they went down there and they brought homeless people up here to service because we ministered down there. And the sad part about it is we only brought like 45. Pearl would say there's 100 trying to come. Sometimes he would have a whole van load of hookers that just worked all night. And they were hookers. And they dressed like hookers. Even worse than them you see on TV. That's all right. And they'd walk in this church, and I heard some people, better cover them up. I thought, let's give them God first. Come on, now. Some of you people right here, when they come to the altar, you was the very first up there and hugged them and prayed them through. God saved them and changed their life. Yeah. We got to get out of religion because God loves everybody. Yeah. This has got to flow. Yeah. You see, it's got to flow. See, what happens when the walls begin to come down? This is what I want. I want to see the Holy Spirit poured out, running out of us. Well, you know, in Acts, the third chapter, you just put up, I believe it's, what is it, verse number six. Peter tore the dams down in his water. Now, don't you say, well, Peter was a disciple, he was righteous. If you believe that, you ain't read your Bible. He got, he, when they come to get Jesus, he drawed a sword and cut a man's ear off. Did he not? James and John, which was right there next to him, they called the sons of thunder. They, would, they always wanted to fight. They was willing to fight anybody. They were, they were just man, man, I guess. Peter made a lot of mistakes. But all of a sudden, the dam broke when the rushy mighty wind come in. Oh, yeah. 
Peter was on his way to pray because that's what they did. But the, he, he was out of religion. Under the religion, he had went in there, offered his prayers, and went home. But you see, the dam broke. He wasn't bound by religion no more. On the way to pray, there was this guy saying, give me some money. Peter, being a typical unemployed fisherman, <laughs> he said, I ain't got no money. But he said, I broke my dam loose. Out of my belly flows rivers of living water. Say that, well, I might as well say it. That's what happened. Out of my belly full of rivers of water, and he wretched down. And he said, I don't have money. I don't have gold. I can't promise you tomorrow, but I can tell you this much. Ever what I have, I'm giving unto you. Rise up and walk. And that body begin healed again. The same God that moved for him is going to move here this morning. The same God. Now I'm going to confess. I believe confession is good. Because I wanted everybody in here to take part. The last year or so, I've almost quit laying hands on people because I want you to. I was trying to teach you that. God spoke to me this week. He said, son, when they get ready to lay hands on them, it don't excuse you. And so God's telling me, he said, you need to start laying hands back on people. And then one night, I forget what night it was, I'm, I'm in the middle of thinking all this, and Perry Stone preached. And you know how he likes to preach with numbers, and I don't understand all this stuff. Way above my head. But you know what the year 2020 is? In the Greek, if you take the numbers, it's the year of the hands. Do you know what it is under the Hebrew 5087? It's the year of the hands. Perry says it don't always, it's not always prophetic like that, but he says there's times it's prophetic, and when it's prophetic, it's going to happen. And this is what he said. He said, it's time for Pentecostal people to return back to Pentecost and start laying hands on people because it's by the laying on of hands that God's going to begin to move. I'm telling you, go to the streets and highways and begin to touch somebody and say, in the name of this Jesus of Nazareth, would you rise up and walk? Let them know that there's power in that name. That's why I told you there's nothing special about these hands. Nothing. But when God, I come in obedience with the word of God, whether it's you or me, when you touch somebody or I touch somebody, it's not us touching them, it's the hand of God because we're in obedience to the word of God. There's one thing. It goes to the book of Acts. I'm going to wind my message down. I'm, I'm trying not to lie and tell you more close, but I don't know. <laughs> but there's one theme through the book of Acts. Every time the dam is broken except one, it was done by the laying on opinions. Did you hear me? Luke preached and Samaria got saved. But it was Peter and John come down and laid hands. And it broke. Paul met the disciples of John. And he said, have you received this? They said, we don't even know what you're talking about. You see, you may not understand a thing I'm saying. But if you want it, you can have it. <laughs> he laid hands on them. And they received. The dam was broke. 
the outpouring began, the river began to flow. Here's the thing I want to tell you. If it flows, it's unstoppable. I've seen this in my 40-some years of ministry. I've seen this so many times. I've seen one person in one family get set loose. And before you know it, there's 50 or 60 people in that family saved. Because the dam broke. <laughs> Sister Dot, when it breaks, <laughs> you got to move. <laughs> How many remembers that old song? When God gets ready, you got to move. <laughs> I'm preaching to the few. I said, when God gets ready, you got to move. I'm going to tell you, there's those that's going to run to the Lord. There's those that's going to run the opposite way. Be one of those that set your eyes on the Lord and say, when God gets ready, and let me tell you, he's ready right now. I used to know an elderly woman. I'll give this quick testimony. And she had a stroke and she was paralyzed down one side. I believe it was her left hand that couldn't move, her left side. She still walked. She kind of hobbled. She drove a little 65 Mustang. I was young. I could rock in little sports cars, you know. <laughs> but she had one of them little knobs on the stern wheel she could steer it with one hand. You know what I'm talking about? I call them truck driver things. But she had one of them. She could steer that thing. And before she had her stroke, she'd play the guitar and sing. Well, she didn't have no left hand. She couldn't chord a guitar. But ever so often, on a Sunday night service, the spirit would get moving. And you could just watch her. All of a sudden, that limp left her. And she'd be sitting somewhere near the front. And she'd walk up to the front. It didn't matter if they was preaching or what. Everybody just stopped and looked. And she'd walk up there and she'd reach down and get one of them guitars. Back then, there'd be 15 guitars up there. And she'd get one of them guitars and she'd strap that on. And she'd walk up that mic. And she'd say, when God gets ready, you got to move. And that old left hand would go up and down that neck. And that old right hand was keeping tune before long. Everybody in that church had a Holy Ghost dance. We was a dancing and a shouting. And she would dance and shout all over that church. Because when God gets ready, I'm going to tell you something. There's some lives right here this morning. God is ready for you. God is ready. Not the pastor, not the religion, but God said, I want to bust your dam. Let rivers begin to flow. I don't care how you was raised. Give me one more minute and I'm going to give an altar call. I, I want to shout. I don't know how you was raised. I've never asked you what your background is and I do not care. But can I tell you something? I don't care what it is. And we probably as weird as the day is long I am. But when God gets ready, the dam's breaking and today's your day. Amen. Tell me your name again, young man. Darrell. Can I tell you something? God's ready. Are you thirsty? Say it out loud. Are you thirsty? I'm thirsty. Are you thirsty? CJ, are you ready? Are you thirsty? Amen. Sister Doc? Woo! <laughs> Your name is Ash, Ash, Ashley. Shake my hand here. I want, can I just tell you something? I feel God. I want, can I speak a word to you? Just between me and you, it's not the one embarrass you. The Lord spoke to me and said, he was glad that you're here. He's wanting to minister to you. 
I don't know what. He didn't tell me what. But can I tell you what I see? There's a humongous black cloud been following you around. And all of a sudden, there's a light fixing the bus through, and that light's Jesus Christ. <laughs> can I ask you one personal question? Are you thirsty for the things of God? It's going to happen. I hope I didn't embarrass you. I did not mean to. Hallelujah. Sister Michelle, stand up just for a second. Yeah, let's take her hand right there. Step out into the aisle. Michelle, I'm going to tell you something. Maddie, you all got to, you got to strengthen. You got to walk out of here with dams busted. Here's what God, here's what I feel in my spirit. In my prayer time, the Lord spoke this to me. He said, all hell broke loose and coming. He's fighting on every hand, but he is a loser and been defeated. And God is God. And he cannot stand in the presence of the river. I don't even know what virtue is. Glory! I'm done preaching. But now we're going to, I want to pray. If you don't think I, you know you cannot operate under authority until you submit to authority. And can I tell you something? You're looking at one preacher that's not afraid to run. To seek the Lord. There have been times, Sister Sheila, I needed a touch from God. And right while somebody's preaching, the Lord said, it's now or never. Man, I've stood up and I've run to the altar. He said, ain't you worried about what they're going to think? It's, it's my life. It ain't their lives. I'm the one that wants to go to heaven. I'm the one that wants to minister. So I'd run, literally run. I was preaching a revival one time. Me and another guy was preaching. God spoke to me and said, it's time. I said, God, what have I done wrong? You ever think, you ever think you're perfect? I thought, boy, I, if anybody's going to go to heaven, I am. The Lord said, you self-righteous person, you. I run up and gave my heart back to the Lord. Holy Ghost hit me, and you talking about we finally did have revival. Because you know why? I broke the dam. I'm going to spend a lot of time on this. I've already ministered, but I'm going to tell you something. That's what God told me to do. But I also know you got to do it the biblical way. You have to be thirsty. You have to go to Jesus, and you have to drink. I can lay my hands on you all day, and you don't drink, you won't receive. I've told you that story. I probably got scars on my back to tell you that story. I told you about breaking ice for some cows and a couple of old stubborn mules. It about zero weather, and I had about a mile to walk. My sister said, them cows are thirsty. They're going to die they don't get water. So I jump up on that water trough, about three foot high or so, and I'm jumping up and down, couldn't break the ice. He said, here, take a rock. <laughs> Put me in that rock. <laughs> that ice finally broke through. I went down waist deep in water. And it's zero weather. I climbed out there and I froze immediately. I'm walking like Frankenstein. And them crazy horses, or mules, I think they were, and about 10 cows, 
They looked at me like I was stupid. Not one of them took a drink. I walked that road many years after it. I rocked them cows, even though they're the neighbors. He'd say, you're rocking my cows. I said, I rock stupidity. <laughs> I got home, man. I thought, I thought, oh, boy. My mom and dad's at work. My grandma kept us till they got home. And I thought, well, grandma was going to feel sorry for me and make me a big old cup of hot chocolate. You just had to know grandmas back then. They're different. My grandma carried a switch in one hand. And a snuff thing in the other. <laughs> she either spit on you or whipped you. <laughs> and that's true. She said, well, how stupid can you be? Wham, wham, wham. You talking about getting one of them switches across a frozen leg. Man, I done one of them Pentecostal dances before I was Pentecostal. <laughs> Mama come home. I said, well, Mama going to feel sorry for me. Because the grandma done with me. My mom said, you stupid. That's stupid. And she grabbed a switch and wore me out again I thought well surely dad will feel sorry for me dad come home and got my third whipping I didn't think that was fair I wish they'd have communicated (laughs) 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 so I know that I can give an altar call and you can run up here and I can lay hands on you but that don't mean you're going to drink but if you come to drink when it hits, all heaven's going to break loose and revival's going to start in your life. I said it. Stand to her feet over this building. Sister Lisa and Brother Carlos, work your way to the music, please. If you want to drop them instruments and get prayed for, go ahead now. I always pray for the people working because sometimes they miss everything. You have to pray for them. And sometimes I'll tell you, you got to lay it down and get up here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you beforehand, I'm not going to surprise nobody. I'm not going to pray 15 minutes over you unless God tells me to. I'm going to just touch you. That's what the Lord said. I'm just going to stand on the authority God says. And I'm only going to touch those that God that comes forward, that God that's hungry and thirsty. I'll not come back unless God tells me to. I'll, I'll rephrase that. If God tells me, I'll do what he says. This is the way he instructed me, so I'm going to obey him. I'm not going to beg you to come. I'm not going to give you a sad story. I love to do that. I love giving altar calls. But there comes a time that you've got to be thirsty for your stuff. Those that's listening to me, you may be at home right now, and you may not have it, nowhere to go. I want you. Can I take one moment to talk to them? Yeah. I want you to touch yourself. And by touching yourself, it's this church and our bo- prayers and our faith touching you. Yeah. Yeah. And dams will break. How many believe that can happen? Amen. You may have big old rocks in your dam, or you may have little stones. But ever what it is, if you're ready, and you want it to be broke loose, I'm going to ask you in just a second. I'm going to wait till we get to music. So I want you to come up here and just form your line. I'm not going to take you. I'm just going to touch you. I may just walk through and just barely touch you. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But I'm going to tell you something. If you'll believe, and you're drinking, it's not my touch. It's a rag roll hand. It can be yours. But it's an obedience. Yes. When I touch you, I believe that God's done the work. Come on. Amen. Even before I touch you, if you want to know the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a song. Mm. Give, me a, uh, give me a song real quick. Let's get into worship. I want everybody worshiping. I'll give you a time to come. Come. Holy Spirit, I need Come on. you. Come on. Hurry up.
you're going to receive. You're going to receive. I want everybody in this building to agree with me. We're going to receive. Raise your hands towards heaven and say, God, I'm so thirsty. I'm going to get the front row, then I'll come back and get the second row. Bow with glory. With glory. It's not too late. It's not too late. Right where you're at right now, I want you to pray. God's going to do something for you. You say, Pastor, I've never seen nothing like this. That's all right. I want you to say, God, if this is real, touch me right now. Touch me before this day's over. If this is what's real, God, touch me. Don't be afraid. 
to say it right there man I felt that I felt that I felt that hallelujah hallelujah those that's out there raise your hands with me all over this building in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord renew, refresh, retouch Lord let us revive Let's change that just a second by your worshiping. I, I feel the touch. Something good's gonna happen. <laughs> Give me that little chorus. Something good. <laughs> Come here, Sister Becky. Sister Brenda, I want you to take that shoe off with the sore foot. How will you something good is going to happen? You help me. Something good is going to happen. It's changing right now. Burn. It's changing. Brother Tony, just come here just a second. Brother Tony, come here just a minute if he can. He can't. Brother Tommy, come here just a minute. Sit down right there. Sit down, Brenda. Scoot over, Dean, just a little bit while you're working. I'm bossy, ain't I? <laughs> Sister Tommy, she has a sore on her foot. It's infected. They're, and when you get done praying, a completion is taking place. You're going to feel it leave. Happen. Happen to you something. Just trust God. Just trust God. <laughs> something good. Don't rush this. Don't rush this. Let it happen. Let it happen. I want everybody in this room, if you would, I want you to raise your hands towards me, towards Carlos, and towards Sister Lisa. I want this same. I, I want my dams to break. Hallelujah. Lord, I receive it right now. I receive it, God, right now. I receive it. Fear. Fear. I want to share this with you. I want to share this with you real fast. If I would ask you what's the opposite of faith, what would you say? Fear and doubt. Can I give you what the Bible says? Sight. I heard a preacher say that. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by what? So the thing that will cost you your victory is what you see with your eyes. Your senses, in other words. If God done something for you, you, have to, you can't look at the circumstances around you. You've got to look through faith. When you look through faith, you can only see God's answer.
So here's what happens. Everybody expects a miracle, and you go home, and you're facing the same old problem, so you give up. I'm telling you, God done something. Look with your spiritual eyes by faith. Then you receive what God has. Brenda, get up and walk on that. Is it sore? <laughs> well, get up and walk on it. <laughs> Tell me God's not a healer. Tell me my God ain't a healer. Ooh. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm still a little thirsty. I'm greedy. The more I get, the more I want. <laughs> it's like putting a big old... I can't even think. Good big fried chicken dinner. I love chicken better than anything worse. I can never eat just one piece. Be truthful with you. I ain't going to tell you. I'll eat two or three. And if they can't look, and I'll get that fourth piece. <laughs> That's why I'm about God. I get a little drink. And you say, ain't you satisfied? No, I just started it. <laughs> I guess I'm an alcoholic for God. <laughs> Gonna happen. We're going to pray. And the desire of smoke is going to be left. But then she has to make her decision. Do you understand? If she decides to go back to them, the desire, you know, will be up. Then she goes back into it. But when we pray, it's going to be broken for a season. And I say this because when I pray these prayers, I see them come, and I, warn, I always, I'm not here to warn her, but I tell people, it's going to leave, whether it's this or whatever, but you have to make up your mind. You know, it's like uh, somebody that's trying to, somebody's praying for a lost loved one. I can pray that there'll be a hedge around and that they'll hear the word for a season, but then during that season, they have to make up that decision, and this is going to be for her. How many believes that God can take that away? Amen. And, and it's permanent if she receives it. Amen? It will not come back. But if she, that's why it's important that we pray for that God lets her have a desire, this hunger. If you believe that God's a deliverer right now, as they agree in faith. Heavenly Father, Lord, this addiction, Lord of nicotine, God. Lord, we, we just curse it, Lord, in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, let it leave her body, God. Lord, let her know, God, that she don't have to suffer to this, God, that you are her deliverer, God, and that you love her and that you care for her, God. And, Lord, I pray right now that the Spirit of God will move upon her with love. God, that this is a no-judgment zone, God. Lord, that your love has no conditions. Lord, that it will reach down and touch her right now. In the name of Jesus. There it is. <laughs> Come on, give God a prayer. God can touch anything you got. Somebody else. One thing after another. Let's pray right now. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord, ever what's causing this swelling, God, let it be gone. Lord, the price was paid to over 2,000 years ago. Lord, we know God. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, God, we, we agree with your word. Let this be gone, God, and ever what's causing this. And Lord, put a hedge around this child. Lord, and speak to that family, God, in Jesus' name. Anyone else?
Let's pray right now. What's the, do you know the child's name? Kaysen. Heavenly Father, Lord, right now, Lord, we bring this child before you. Lord, we're not, we know, God, that cancer has no authority, God. And Lord, right now, we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Make hope. Amen. I'm, I remember. I remember about 20 years ago, a little girl about this high come to this church, and, and uh, her dog got hit by a car, and the dad called me and said, "The dog's laying dead in the ditch. And the insides are out." He said, "But she wants you to pray for that dog." I said, "Well, put her on the phone." And she got on the phone, and I said, "Lord, in the name of Jesus." Raise this dog from the dead and let it rise up. All of a sudden, I heard the awful noise, and they said that dog come running in that house. You say, I'm telling you, that it wasn't my prayers, that little girl. She had innocent, you know. I, I, God, you say, does God care enough to raise a dog? He, he made them, didn't he? He made them, and he'll heal his calf. Let's pray for his calf. We ain't prayed for it yet, have we? He'll heal your vehicles, your appliances. He'll heal. He's, there's nothing that God will not do. And, and this time that we start proclaiming it and not be ashamed of it because God cares about you. Proclaim it out there. Amen.
I know you are hungry, but I have to share this with you all. Um, I think Pastor and Becky was on vacation back in the summer when I asked you all to agree with me about my brother. See, I could have easily asked you all to pray, pray for my brother, but no, I knew there was power in agreement. Back in the summer, when we got back from vacation, my brother got a hold of my dad, which had just had open heart surgery. He was homeless, he didn't have a job, nothing, and was on drugs, and I'm not going to go into all that. So I had got a hold of someone that I knew that could put him into a home, and that right there was a miracle that he even got into this, I think it's called Shepherd's Home, it's in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. Okay, give me just five minutes, because this is such a miracle story. This is the freedom, this is the chain breaking that I'm talking about. Okay, so he contacted us, and we went and got him. Okay, and we took him to this home, and this was on a Sunday. Let's see, they have church up there on a Tuesday. He finally, listen, let me tell you all, he got baptized a couple weeks ago in water. And this is what he, this is what he told my mama. This is what he told my mama. He said, I'll have the Holy Ghost soon. So I want to tell you something. My brother has had a drug addiction off and on for about 20 years. And let me tell you. Let me tell you right now, it was deathly grim. There was times it was deathly grim. We didn't know if we was going to get a phone call that he was going to be alive. But let me tell you, when I say that God's word doesn't return void, I told my mom, I said, we don't walk with our, we, we walk by faith and not by sight. We speak God's word and we speak his truth over him. So I kept declaring, I said, God, I don't know how you're going to do it. And I don't know when you're going to do it. But he is the seed of a righteous per person, which is my mama. And I said, he has to be delivered. That's what it says in Proverbs. It says in Proverbs that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I said, God, I don't know how you're going to do it or when you're going to do it. So when I talked to him, I know he was homeless, but he, had, he still had his phone, and he still, it was charged. He was in a park, and he could charge his phone. So I got a hold of him, and I said, David, I want to tell you something. I said, the place we're going to take you to costs money. Okay? I said, and you can easily get up in there and walk out. I said, if you thought you heard Jesus from Mama, every time you saw her, you're about to get it 24-7. I said, so I need to know. I need to know that you're ready. He said, I'm tired of the cycle. He said, I'm tired of the cycle. He said, I say yes. That's not even the miracle. That's part, some of the miracles. Yeah, yeah. So he writes me a letter. After so long of being there, they get to write letters. So I get a letter in the mail, and he said, Leslie, I want to tell you what happened. And you got to understand, my brother has been in jail several times. He's been in state rehabs, which don't work. Hear me if this camera's still on. State rehabs don't work. It's only Jesus. <laughs> he said, when you all drop me off on Sunday, he said, on Tuesdays, we have church. And he said, I'm so used to detoxing in a jail or in a rehab that takes weeks. Listen, I, he said, you may not understand this, but it takes weeks and days, and it's horrible to detox for what he was on. He said on Tuesday when they had church, he said, Leslie, I went to the altar. And I, he said, when I got up off there, there was so many tears. He God delivered him through those tears. Do you know he was playing basketball the very next day with those boys? He was playing basketball. And we call all the time and check on him. Of course, he's only allowed like a one phone call a week and all this. Do you know he's in leadership there? He's in leadership there. He drives these boys to places. And I can't go into all the details, but he's... And I contacted the guy, and he actually comes in here and does revivals in New Tazel. So I texted him the other day. I said, I want you to know, because he used to be a drug addict. I said, I want you to know I thank you for what, what you have up there, the facility that you have. I said, God is using you mightily. And I said, we never knew how my brother was going to get set free and delivered. And I never, I never knew it would be in a home like this. But mighty Jesus, God is using my brother. And I'm telling you, mark my word. He'll be down here to share his testimony. I don't know when and I don't know how, but I'm telling you, he, he's sending me scripture and letters, okay? That's not, that's not my brother, okay? When I say God is a miracle worker, what he, 
And let me tell you something. My brother knew what it was like to, to detox in a jail and to detox in state rehab. So the, for my brother to see the mighty hand of God, not to, for those withdrawals, let me tell you something. God is moving mightily, mightily. And I'm telling you all, God, do not give up. Do not give up speaking God's word over the prodigal sons and daughters, whatever your, whatever your situation is. Let this be some hope for you all. God set my brother free, and, and he's still continuing. And my brother's like, I'm still, stuff's still being healed in him. He's still being set and free of stuff. But I promise you, mark my word, he will be here to give his testimony. And I don't know how God's going to do it. I don't know where my brother's going to head. But I've seen so many miracles this summer just in my family. Hallelujah. Don't give up praying. Don't give up speaking God's word. It, mm, it doesn't return void. So when I saw that, when I saw that t-shirt that Sheila brought me the other day and I saw those chains broken, I thought, mighty God, my brother is going, the Lord is going to bring thousands to the kingdom of God through my brother because of what he's been through. Don't ever think that God, because it was so deathly grim, you all. We thought there was no hope, but we didn't care. We thought, God, we don't know how you're going to do it, but we trust in you because it was out of our hands. The t oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I forgot about that, Lisa. So about two, three weeks before that, Brother Bill has no ideal. I love Brother Bill and Sister Becky. They're like a mom and dad to me spiritually. But see, Brother Bill didn't know the situation to a depth. And I hadn't talked about it in years because my brother had been clean for a little while. He didn't know how bad it had been in the last year. But Brother Bill, we were here on a Sunday morning. He said, Leslie, step out. Do you all remember this? Those that are here, they was like, raise your hands and declare that your, your brother's about to be set free. Do you all remember that? I was like, my brother's going to be set free. Brother, I had not ever mentioned a thing to Pastor Bill in a long time. But the Lord knew. The Lord knew, and mighty Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I just, I wanted to share that with you all, because God is mighty, and he... That's what happens when the dam gets broke. The river goes, the river goes where it chooses to go. You love the Lord? Had some great testimonies. That's the beginning. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. Shake hands and for visitors. Shake hands to everyone. And uh, don't forget services. God bless you.